Hey there viewers, Tanner here, and welcome to a tutorial on how to play PC games on your TV. This may sound familiar to some of you because I've already made a tutorial on how to do this, so why make another? My previous tutorial has gained a little bit of popularity, and I feel that it's not as concise as it could be, and that people aren't getting as much out of it as they could. So I'm taking some of the things that I learned from the previous tutorial, as well as some of the questions that people have asked, and I'm going to make a video that'll hopefully be a little more informative and a little bit quicker. So in this video, we'll start by talking about the parts and the tech that you're going to need to rig up a setup like this. Secondly, we'll cover what to do with that tech. Next, we'll talk about the actual configuration of both the computer and the TV to make sure that the connections are getting the signals they need. And then we're gonna wrap up with a frequently asked questions section which is mostly questions from the comment section of the previous tutorial. So let's start off with the tech that we're gonna to need to do this. You can see here that I have a main monitor and a secondary, but you don't need either of these really if you plan to only use a TV for your display. I also have a wireless headset and a computer because, well, you need a computer to do this. Just make sure that it has an input that matches the type of cable that you plan to use. In our case, this is gonna be an HDMI cable. So you can see here, I have an Amazon Basics HDMI cable. Amazon Basics is pretty baller and it's pretty cheap as well, but I'm actually using a media bridge for the setup that I'm using. Other than that, you're probably gonna want some controllers since you're gonna be playing from your better couch. I have a shield controller for when I'm still sitting at the desk and I also have a wireless Xbox 360 controller, which is great for when I'm playing from the bed. It's also nice because if I have a buddy over, we can play couch co-op games. Other than that, a wireless mouse is pretty awesome for this setup too, because if you're watching videos, you can easily click through the Windows menus and things like that, or browse the web if you have a wireless keyboard. The next thing that you're going to need is a TV, obviously, since you're linking up to your TV, just make sure that you have an input on the back that matches the cable that you plan to use. Other than that, your TV specifications aren't that important, but we will talk a little bit more about that in the frequently asked questions section. I also have an amplifier for my home theater system, but only worry about that if you have to. So let's go ahead and get this configuration underway. Here you can see the back of my graphics card with its two DVI ports filled by the monitors, an empty HDMI port, and a display port. We're gonna go ahead and plug in the HDMI port since that's what we're using to send our signal. Some older graphics cards only have VGA ports, and some older TVs only have VGA ports as well. Even though I have a newer TV, you can see the VGA port down at the bottom right. The problem with VGA is that it doesn't send audio which would mean having an analog or an optical cable sending the audio separately. Obviously, we're just gonna use HDMI because it gets both signals in one. So after plugging in your HDMI cable, you're probably not gonna have an image on your screen, like I don't, which is completely fine. Right now, what we're gonna do is we're going to set the inputs on the TV so that it knows where the signal's coming from. In my case, I plugged my HDMI cable into the amplifier first. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my amplifier to HDMI 3 because I remember that I plugged my HDMI cable from the PC into that. Some of you might not have that step, which is completely fine. All you'll do instead is get your TV remote or go to the buttons on your TV and go to the input button and scroll down to whatever input it was that you plugged into. In my case, HDMI 1. Still no image though which takes us over to the computer part where we're gonna get a signal sent to that input. All right, so now with all of our connections rigged up and ready to go, we just have to get some signal sent from the computer to the TV. So the easiest way to do this is to hold down the Windows key and press P. So this is going to bring up a menu that's normally only seen on a laptop, but all you do is go over to duplicate, let go of the Windows key, and voila, you have your desktop on both your main monitor and on your TV. Now, if you didn't want to have it displayed on both, you could always do it the old fashioned way and right click your desktop, go to screen resolution, and then here's an image of all of your monitors. So you could always just set it to display only on one or only on two. But for my sake, I like to keep it on the main monitor as well. And then rather than dealing with you know, not having it here, I'll just turn off my monitor and ignore that it's even there. The last part of the signal that we need to send is the audio. So to send the audio, all we do is right click down here on the speakers, go to playback devices, and somewhere in here you should see your TV or your audio receiver for your 
surround sound. All I do here is right click, set as default device, hit OK, and you're done. It's as easy as that. Also, one of the great things about the settings that we just did is now every time you turn on that TV and it's still connected to your computer, it's going to automatically connect as a supported display. So it's going to be duplicating to that no matter what. So as soon as you set it to that input, you're good to go. All right. So now we move on to the frequently asked questions section. A lot of people were wondering if there's a specific type of PC that you have to have in order to do this. And no, you can do it with laptops, desktops, Linux, Windows, you name it. There's probably a way to do it. The only requirement is that you have some sort of additional output besides for your regular monitor that is. So like me, I have two DVIs, an HDMI and a display port. I use the DVIs for my monitors and then I use the HDMI out to go to my TV. If you have a VGA like in an older system, you can also use that because a lot of TVs have VGA ends. Another big question was performance. Is this going to cause a frame hit or any sort of impact on the way that my games perform? All it's doing is duplicating an image, so it's really just taking the same exact signal. It's not going to have any sort of frame hit. The only time that you're going to notice a frame hit is if the resolution is different. So if your game is normally displaying at 720p and you have a 1080p TV and it's sending in 1080p, then you may notice a frame hit at that point. But it mostly depends on your settings in game, whether or not it is going to have any sort of performance hit. On top of that, if your game runs at 60 frames per second flat all the time when you're playing on just your monitor, as long as you don't change any of those settings at all, it's going to run just the same on your TV. And that doesn't matter whether your TV is 55 inches and your monitor is normally 30 or vice versa. Computers don't know display sizes, they only know resolution. So as long as your resolution is the same, you're not going to notice any difference. Also, there's some people who apparently are still living in like old school console days. You don't have to change any channels to get this to work. It's all about your inputs. So when we went through and did HDMI 1 as our input, that's all you have to change. You don't have to go to channel 3 or 4 or something like that. So some people were reporting an unsupported error coming up on their TV. Normally this is going to be caused by an incorrect refresh rate or an incorrect resolution being sent to their TV. So if you have a 60 hertz 1080p monitor and you're trying to duplicate to a TV that's only a 30 hertz TV or a 720p TV, then you're gonna run into some issues and it's going to be like, yo, you need to step back and you're gonna to have to change your settings to reflect what your TV is capable of. So make sure you're looking at that if you start getting an unsupported error. And lastly, some people started wondering about wireless options. They were asking if there was a way that they could do this without using an HDMI cable. There are a few options out there, though most aren't viable for gaming. For watching TV, Netflix, that sort of thing, you can easily just use like a Chromecast or a Amazon TV. You can use Steam Link for gaming, but it's pretty iffy from what I hear, but it's one of the new rising things and apparently Steam has put a lot of work into their streaming service, so it could be viable in the future. On top of that, Nvidia Game Stream is also an option if you have a Shield tablet. I do, and it's actually pretty solid, but you know, 300 some bucks compared to a $12 HDMI cable, you gotta sort of weigh the differences there. So that's all I've got for you. I think that this is really, really easy to do, and it's something that anybody who owns a PC should probably try, especially if you're gaming on it and don't feel like cashing out on a console, but really just want to sit on your ass on the couch and play some games. If you found this helpful, I would really, really appreciate a like. If not, totally understand. If you have any questions, which I totally expect that somebody's going to, by all means, drop them in the comments below and I'll be back with you probably within the same day. I'm pretty good about answering questions as quick as possible. So I hope you enjoy all the glory of PC gaming from your couch or bed on your big screen TV. And thanks a lot for watching.